Hello, it's Elder here, and today I want to talk to you about this blade sharpening system brought to you by Wicked Edge. Now, I've had my eye on these high-end sharpeners made by Wicked Edge for quite some time, but they were always just a little bit out of reach. Well, recently I decided to contact Wicked Edge, ask them if they would like to send me a unit to put through my review process, and luckily they said yes, and sent me this pretty cool hat. So what I'd like to do is go into a bit more detail about the awesomeness of this blade sharpener. So let's get into it. Before I even get started, I want to get into some other information. Now, I love blades. I have all sorts of blades, whether they're in use for the kitchen, whether I'm using them out in the field, whether they're for self-defense. But when it comes to sharpening these blades, I'm uh, what's known as a layperson, to put it uh, politely. Sure, I've used whetstones and the Boy Scouts and continued on and used other gadgets that were uh, inexpensive that did the job. But once again, did the job on my less expensive blades that I'm using out in the field to hack around with or in the kitchen or whatever. But when it came to my finer blades and more expensive blades, I certainly didn't trust myself to sharpen them. So now what are my choices? I either send them out and pay big money for somebody to actually put a fine edge on these blades or... I get a system like this. So what I really want you to understand is that I'm a lay person when it comes to sharpening. So if I can do this and get a great edge on my uh, more expensive blades, so can you. So let's get into a little bit more of the process. When it comes to the setup on this unit, I used a lot of information that came with the actual manuals that provided by uh, Wicked Edge, but I also went on YouTube and found a bunch of great reviews, both from the Wicked Edge company as well as other reviewers out there that really got me uh, oriented with the system. And as I stated, they're in-depth tutorials. So for the purpose of what I'm doing here with this review, I'm certainly not providing a tutorial. It's more of an overview. Tutorials out there are done incredibly well. So be sure to check out those tutorials once you're done watching my overview. Now for this review purpose, I'm just going to use a standard uh, chef knife that I have in my kitchen. Uh, nothing super special, just a regular kitchen knife. One thing that I do want you to keep in mind is a little trick as far as finding the actual angle that you're going to set it to. There's a lot of uh, guidelines out there. But a cool little trick that I learned from Wicked Edge was to go ahead and just put a, utilizing a Sharpie or a marker, basically on the edge itself, just color it in that line or that edge with the marker. And then what we basically want to do is grab your highest grit, let's say I have a thousand grit uh, sanding block here, utilize that and make sure that you're able to take that marker line off and if, with a little adjustment up and down or going uh, up a degree, down a degree, you'll basically be able to take that line off and know exactly the right angle that you need for sharpening your blade. Getting started here, what we have here on the side is a little leveler, which is pretty cool because you'll put it here into the opening depending of course on the depth of the actual knife so that you know that it is level. So pretty cool little tool there. I can go ahead, set that up, know that the blade is level. Pretty much I want to try to set it up in the middle here. Wicked uh, logo is facing towards you. Then we have to clamp it down. So we know that it's level here. Taking this clamp arm, pressing it down. Now it is locked in place. So now after removing the little leveler, putting it back in place so we don't end up losing it, uh, I want you to keep in mind that this model is the WE-130 model. Now, there are a bunch of different models, uh, depending on price points, that Wicked Edge offers. Uh, once again, fitting your budget. And of course, the more expensive, the more bells and whistle, whistles, the easier it is to operate. But the principle still remains, remains the same, whether it's an inexpensive model or one of their more expensive models. Now, on this 130, what we want to do next is go ahead and adjust the, uh, the actual angle which I know on this knife by using the, uh, the uh, marker test is 15 degrees. So left side's already set up, going ahead and setting it up here, which just basically there's all these little notches, move it over to the 15, tighten it up, and you are good to go. All right, after getting everything tightened down, and remember, always check these things. They do have a tendency to loosen up, especially in the beginning before everything's broken in. So every once in a while, especially when you are changing out your sanding blocks, just go ahead, give it a little uh, touch here, make sure everything's snug and good to go before you get started. Now, when it comes to the actual blocks, 
uh, the sizes that I have or the grits that I have is starting at 100 and going all the way to basically 0.6 microns. So once again, the higher the number, the finer it is, uh, all the way up to this nice ceramic. And when you're looking at the 100, you're starting with this big rough edge. So considering that I do have a pretty dull chef knife here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start it with the 200. So the 200 grit, which is basically the orange ones, all we do is go ahead and grab these shafts, place these right in, very simple, it's just a hole that it goes right through. Go ahead, do the same thing on the other side. Now, once again, I can't stress enough about safety. All right, we're talking about some blades here, whether they are sharp, sharp whether they are dull, both of them will get you in trouble. So be smart, be safe, especially when you're first starting out. Take that extra caution and uh, you'll bode much better in the end. Trust me on that one. All right, so basically we are here. As I stated, I want to start with the 200. We got our angle set. And all I'm thinking about here is going in this forward motion. Forward motion, you could tell that's a little rough there because of course it is 200 grit. So it's actually taking a little bit of that metal off. And basically, I'm just going to keep going with these forward strokes now. Once again, as I watch these tutorials, some people do forward strokes, some people do back strokes, other people will concentrate on certain area. Basically, what I learned is with your own experience and after you put in some time, you basically decide what works best for you. So once again, just working that whole blade, also thinking about safety. And you're going to keep going until basically you start to you hear the sound change a little bit and you'll also feel less friction as you're going through. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Now from there, from the 200, I'm gonna go ahead, take these off, and slap on the 400s and 600s. Put that on. Work that for a little while. Now keep in mind that uh, this is labor intensive and you will probably break a sweat just like I end up doing. Once again, same principle as four, as you go ahead and work it, working it, as you feel it becoming smoother and less resistance, that's when you wanna go ahead, flip it over now to the 600. Once again, you can tell the sound changes, less grinding, I apologize if this sound is annoying and bothering your teeth, but you kind of got to get used to it if you plan on getting one of these in the future, right, or operating one of these. That feels pretty good. Now we'll go to the 600. Okay, that's pretty good. Check here, sometimes you want to go ahead and take some of that extra filings off, keeping it nice and clean so you don't contaminate your actual sanding blocks. Now from there, going from the 600 to the actual 800 and thousands, slip them on. Okay, now we are ready for the thousand grit. Keep in mind, I'm doing a pretty hasty job here just for the purposes of this review and my lack of inexperience or lack of experience. But even then, it's still doing a job and I can just tell it's putting this nice bevel on here. Nice sharp blade. there, just move our shaft over, open it up, blade comes right out, Let's see if we can grab that same piece of paper, so even with a hasty job and done pretty quickly, still put a nice edge on the chef knife with very little work. Now of course, I should have spent much more time on each one of these stones, but 
for the demonstration purposes, I think I got my point across. Well, that basically sums up the process. As you could tell, it's not that complicated. It's not rocket science. Even I can do it. The thing that I would suggest is, of course, I left out a lot of nuances that you're going to have to gain through your own experiences and your own particulars with your, uh, with your blades and with your specific blades. And as I recommend and I can't recommend enough is be sure to go out there to YouTube, check out tutorials. There's a few of them with a tremendous amount of hits. You'll find them right away that are very in-depth, 15, 20 minutes long on just tutorial on how to use this and by subject matter experts, which I certainly am not maybe with application, but certainly not with uh, sharpening or making. So bottom line, if you are in the market for a very high-end knife sharpening system that will put a wicked edge on any of your knives, whether it's an inexpensive chicken, uh, kitchen knife or a chicken knife, whatever. I don't know. Is there such thing as a chicken knife? Anyway, whether it's your kitchen knife or your most prized survival blade, be sure to check out these uh, systems by Wicked Edge. There's a lot of different price points, as I mentioned earlier, and hopefully you'll find one that'll work great for you. Once again, this is Helder. I hope that you found this review helpful.